Hello, how are you doing? And welcome back to the channel. England against Italy, second round of the Six Nations this weekend. The two sides have been announced today. I'm recording this on a Friday. So looking ahead to the game in this video, Steve Borthwick with some big selections in there. I will touch upon the Italian team as well, although obviously for this channel and from my perspective, the focus is going to be on England, but there are a couple of changes in the Italian team to go through for you. So subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, like the video, but most importantly, as ever, drop a comment down below. How do you see this game going on Sunday? Over the years, it would always be a case of England heavy, heavy favourites. And that probably will be the case again in terms of the bookmakers. But Italy seem to be growing. Could they cause an upset against England at Twickenham? All right, let's get into it. So starting with England for this game, three changes for Steve Borthwick. Ollie Lawrence, Henry Slade and Jack Willis all come in to the starting 15. Owen Farrell has been shifted to fly half. Marcus Smith drops to the bench uh, and Ben Curry and Joe Marchant drop out entirely. And Ben Youngs and Anthony Watson, who were substitutes last week against Italy, they both drop out as well. So some interesting calls in there from an England perspective. I think decisions which overall are going to be met with a lot of approval from the fan base. Do drop a comment down below to confirm or deny my suspicions on that one. Uh, but the England team in full, just to run through it, Ellis Genge, Jamie George and Carl Sinkler, unchanged front row. It's also unchanged in the second row with Mara Toje and Ollie Chesson. And then that back row is Lewis Ludlam and Alex Dombrandt are still there at six and eight. And Jack Willis comes in at seven. Jack Van Portfleet keeps his place at scrum half. It's Owen Farrell, as I say, at fly half. That midfield combo of Slade and Lawrence, or Lawrence and Slade, Lawrence the inside centre, unchanged back three, Ollie Hassel, Collins, Max Malins, and Freddie Stewart. The bench, uh, Jack Walker, Maka Vinopola, Dan Cole, Nick Asikwe, Ben Earl, Alex Mitchell, I'll get onto that, that's a big call, uh, Marcus Smith, and Henry Arundel as well. And as I said already, I think this is going to be a selection which overall England fans are pretty pleased with for a few different reasons. It's broken up the Smith Farrell axis, which the overwhelming feel for those two was that they didn't work playing together, essentially. That's been the conversation for a long, long time. I've always been in the camp, particularly before last autumn, I was always in the camp of they actually hadn't played together that much. I think Marcus Smith had started the last 15 test matches. There was only a certain amount of those were, were with Owen Farrell. But I think maybe it has got to the point now where it is time for a change, particularly when you consider it's the beginning of the Steve Borthwick era. And particularly when you consider that England's attack has just struggled to really flow with Smith and Farrell at 10 and 12. I personally don't think it's necessarily the end for that combination, but I do think Steve Borthwick in his tenure is going to prefer to have Owen Farrell or even George Ford possibly or Marcus Smith at fly half rather than having to fit in, say, Owen Farrell at inside centre. And what that does from an England perspective is means we have two proper out and out centres starting with Ollie Lawrence at 12 and Henry Slade at 13. Ollie Lawrence, since his move from Worcester to Bath, has been Arguably the form centre in the Premiership, certainly one of, and a lot of people have been calling for his inclusion in the team. I am interested to see how he's going to go at inside centre because he's been playing most of his rugby for Bath and you just get a little bit more space in that outside channel. How effective is he going to be at international level in the 12 jersey? But without question, he deserves that opportunity. And Henry Slade, as we know, is actually got to the point now. He's got over 50 caps for England. Very good operator at outside centre. I feel a little bit sorry for Joe Marchant because I felt, again, it's another occasion where he's come in and then been discarded is probably the wrong language to use. But he's then find himself out of the match day 23 for the next game. I don't, think, I don't think that's necessarily a reflection of his performance, but I do think that perhaps maybe with him going to France next year, that's in the consideration. He's not necessarily a long-term option for England. Um, but Henry Slade and Ollie Lawrence, I think that's a centre combination that we can all be excited about. But can they deliver? The England midfield for years, quite like literally years, a decade, it's been a real struggle to get a consistent pairing. It's always been Manu Tuolangi if he's fit. And then who else can play in there? Is it going to be Owen Farrell in a sort of 10-12 combo of either George Ford or Marcus Smith? So this is the first time in a long time, really, that England are playing 
kind of a fly half and then two traditional centers in there in there as well so looking forward to see how they go as I mentioned Joe Marchant drops out I think he's a little unlucky likewise I didn't think Ben Curry had his best game last weekend but I didn't think he was too bad either but I can't complain about the changes that have been made because Jack Willis coming into the back row I didn't expect that actually I did my team to face Italy earlier this week on the channel and I had Ben Earl in there I thought he might get the call up from the subs bench he's still on the bench and it is uh, Jack Willis that gets the nod. I know Steve Borthwick in his press conference has been talking about just what Jack Willis has been through in terms of injury, in terms of Wasps going into administration. He's moved overseas to play rugby regularly and now he's got another chance in the England team. What he gives England is better presence at the breakdown. And if he can just be an absolute menace in that area, which I think is an area England haven't necessarily been the best at in recent years, then he's going to bring something different, isn't he? And he will look to cause real issues for that Italian back row. But I am really excited to see how Jack Willis goes. Really pleased that he's got that opportunity. Um, and then you've still got the option of Ben Earl coming off the bench as well. Uh, as I mentioned, Ben Youngs and Anthony Watson lose their spots. Uh, certainly for Anthony Watson, I don't think it's the end. For Ben Youngs, though, I do wonder whether we are at the beginning of the end. I still think there's a good chance he's part of England's squad for the World Cup, purely based on experience. Um, but he came off the bench against Italy and he was so slow in everything he did. And actually, Steve Borthwick in that press conference with Alex Mitchell being given an opportunity as the replacement scrum half off the bench, spoke about the speed that Mitchell gives them, the threat he can pose around the fringes of rucks when defences get a little bit more stretched and also the control he can bring as well. I would love to see Mitchell given more of a regular opportunity. We'll wait and see if he can keep hold of his place, but I, I'm pleased that he is on the bench for England. Uh, and then just finally, something I haven't mentioned on the channel already is England announced this week the changes to the coaching staff, which will happen at the end of this season. So at the end of the Premiership season, Richard Wigglesworth and Alan Walters uh, coming over from Leicester Tigers. It's just worth remembering that with everything we're seeing from England at the moment, Steve Borthwick has still not been able to put in place the coaching team that is exactly what he wants. So this is an England side that are building under new coaches and it's still going to be a while before it is a coaching setup that Steve Borthwick is fully happy with. I think that's, it's just worth bearing that in mind. I think that's everything I wanted to mention from an England perspective. Uh, I'll move on to Italy, who announced their team as well. Two changes for the Italians. Eduardo Padovani comes onto the wing and Marco Riccioni starts at tight head. And also, particular for fans of the Gallagher Premiership, uh, Jake Pelledri uh, could make his first international appearance since November 2020. Missed all of last season with a really terrible injury. So really good to see him back at this level. But the Italian team in full starting in the front row, Danilo Fischetti, uh, Giacomo Nicotera and Marco Riccioni. Then it's Nic Nicolo Canoni and Federico Ruzza um, and Sebastian Negri, Michele Lamaro and Lorenzo Canoni. And then Stephen Varney, Tommaso Allen, uh, yeah, Luca Morisi and Ignac Juan Ignacio Brex. And then Ange Capuozzo at fullback, Eduardo Padovani, who I mentioned, and Tommaso Menoncello on the other wing. So a couple of changes for the Italians who impressed against France. It's going to be really intriguing to see if Italy are able to back that up, I think. Away from home as well, I think they will be a much tougher test than England have been accustomed to over the years. England have had a few scares against Italy, but they've never lost to them. This is an Italian team who will be coming to Twickenham believing that they can do that, partly because of England's poor form and also partly because of the way in which Italy have improved as well, which has been really well documented. So I am excited to see how the Italians go. As I say, Pelledri on the bench, we're looking forward to see him coming back because he deserves it. It's been a really tough run with injuries for him. But can Italy beat England this weekend? I'm going to give it to England um, just because I think they should have a little bit too much. But... How tight is it going to be? How much will England be sweating? If they, if it does become the first time they lose to Italy, then it is a really, really tough start to the reign of Steve Borthwick. Let's wait and see what happens. I will be at Twickenham. I'll be doing a video after the game. I'm looking forward to it. How do you see it going? And I've just remembered the final thing that I actually forgot to say in terms of England. Henry Arundel is on the bench. So he has bags of speed, hasn't played much for London Irish this year because he's been dealing with a few injuries. I do think if you look at England's back three at the moment, whilst I thought 
Ollie Hassel Collins, Malins, and Freddie Stewart all did all pretty well against Scotland. I think we are still lacking that little bit of pace that we had, say, in the prime of Johnny May or something like that. I think Arundel eventually will be starting for England, uh, but at the moment he'll be coming off the bench and being as explosive as ever, I would imagine. That's my general thoughts on it. I'm picking an England wing, uh, an England win, I beg your pardon. Uh, I think the changes we've seen are generally positive ones from Steve Borthwick. Can Italy go to Twickenham? and get a job done. Let me know in the comments down below, subscribe to the channel, like the video, and I'll see you in the next one.